Uh, okay, we got, so we are taken to another uh, upper limb viva. Are you ready? Yes, I will lead them ready. Okay, so you have this 67 year old patient who came to your um, A&E department. You're the consultant on call. Um, these are her x-rays. How would you proceed to manage? Uh, well, I can see a plain radiograph in the anteroposterior view of uh, the right shoulder, and I can see a fracture of the surgical neck of the humerus. Um, I would like to see another view, uh, a lateral view, actually. Uh, and then I would proceed to ask the patient um, about the history of the injury, time of the injury, uh, mechanism of the fall. Um, I'd like to know if it's an open or a closed injury. I would also yeah. assess her neurovascularly. It's an, it's an isolated neurovascular intact. Uh, all the ATLS and, and uh, uh, trauma guidelines have been uh, uh, done. You've got the okay. information on the uh, screen. Great. On the lateral view, I cannot see that the head is retroverted or anything. Um, so, um, according to those x-rays and the information, I would offer this patient uh, non-operative treatment for the fracture of the surgical neck of the humerus um, in a collar and cuff, which helps to reduce the fracture by the effect of the gravity. I will obtain an x-ray post uh, collar and cuff to confirm the good position, um, and I'll send her home uh, on pain medication. Um, for weekly clinic follow-ups with serial x-rays to make sure that this good reduction has not been lost. Um, and after three weeks, I'll ask her to remove the collar and cuff and start gentle pendular exercises, um, progressing to passive, then active assisted and active range of motion uh, and muscle strengthening to avoid a frozen, so, uh, frozen shoulder or stiffness. So it uh, looks like you're quite uh, adamant that you're going for non-operative treatment. Um, yes, uh, fractures what, what of the proximal humerus could be managed operatively or non-operatively. And previously, people uh, were doing plates, open reduction, internal fixation for these injuries. Uh, but then came the PROFHER trial, a UK trial that was published in 2015, um, uh, with a two-year follow-up comparing operative and non-operative intervention for uh, uh, surgical neck fractures of the humerus. Uh, where 250 patients were recruited, uh, sustaining the above injuries, um, um, and they were all above the age of 16 years old. And they found that at two years follow-up, there was no significant difference in the DASH scores or the confidence scores uh, and the functional outcomes between both groups. Initially, there was a bit of more complications in the non-operative group, uh, but both evened out at the final follow-up. And then, uh, uh, now we have already five-year follow-up for the PROFHER trial, and still uh, the same results are sustained at five years. Uh, there's also the NICE guidelines have changed their uh, uh, guidance at, uh, in 2016, guided by the PROFHER. Uh, they now recommend offering non-operative intervention for uh, non-complicated simple surgical neck fractures, reserving uh, open reduction internal fixation only for those which are complicated by vascular injuries, open injuries, uh, uh, or, or uh, those with a head split, uh, risking AV, AVN of the proximal humerus. Okay, that, that's, uh, well, I think you've, uh, you've explained it well to me. So let's, let's, you know, slightly imagine another scenario. Let's imagine that this was a head split uh, uh, injury or, or even worse. Let's, uh, let's say this is one which was even dislocated in the same woman. Uh, would you fix it then, or would you think of something else? Uh, I would consider a different uh, um, um, treatment plan. Um, in fact, if it's if it's a common unit, I would consider fixing it. If it's a three-part, uh, if it's pretty much smashed, a four-part fracture, people are now talking about uh, shoulder replacement instead, a reverse shoulder arthroplasty or a hemi depending upon the uh, glenoid uh, condition uh, regarding the arthritis. So I would definitely obtain a CT scan, consider the glenoid virgin, consider whether there's glenoid arthritis or not. And I'm aware that there's the PROFHER2 trial, which is looking into that uh, for, for, age, for those who are aged above the age of 65, uh, sustaining uh, comminuted proximal humeral fractures, three or four part, whether non-operative treatment uh, or reverse shoulder replacement or hemiarthroplasty. Uh, the results are not out yet. Uh, but I would be tempted to fix it if it's not so smashed, if it's still uh, uh, amenable to fixation. And according to the Hurtus criteria, I would be guided by that uh, to determine the risk uh, of AVN. Do you know the, what do you know about that criteria? 
um, if if the calcar fragment is attached to the uh, uh, head and how much of the calcar fragment is left, if it's more than eight millimeters, then there is low risk of AVN. If it's less than eight millimeters, the risk of AVN is higher. Thank you. Okay, um, what do you think? Oh, this is a very interesting topic. It's, it's, um, it's very commonly met in clinics. Um, they love it in the VIVA exams, I think. Uh, uh, many of the candidates do meet this on the VIVA exam. And this demonstrating awareness of the uh, recent evidence is very important. I think you cannot go to the FRC exam and you don't know about the proper trial uh, and the results uh, at the two years and the five years, um, and even the proper two. So I think that was good that I knew that. Um, uh, I'm not sure in the part of the question when you asked me about the three parts or the four parts, um, I kind of talked about the proper two trial rather than saying what I will do. Uh, for the patient, no, I think, I think that's that's why we were uh, we were bringing it up actually. So I think that was that was very good. Um, um, uh, it just just to go through uh, what you know what we've said. Um, so you were able to classify it. Uh, you did that when you commented. So did it early on. That was quite good. Uh, you mentioned the um, non-operative treatment, and you mentioned the Hirsch's criteria. Uh, and you, you, you even explained how you would do the non operative treatment with all the follow-ups and you mentioned the UK trials and you even mentioned the NICE guidelines. So I think this is the uh, original uh, uh, proffered trial. Um, and there are some controversies also about it. If you want to do some extra reading, uh, you can do it. Uh, but then uh, now that they've got five-year follow-up results, I think some of these controversies have been addressed. Uh, there's was also talk about the um, age. So I think the mean age was around 66 or 67. I'm not quite sure. But although they included patients above the age of 16, but they ended up with a mean age of uh, uh, 67. So just be aware that uh, if in case you get a much younger patient in the exam. And um, this is the nice guidelines that Bigad was uh, mentioning. And um, this is the proffer two that we also mentioned. Uh, that's still ongoing. We still don't have the results for these, but yeah, yes, we got. Thank you and well done. Thank you, Alid.